Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my hope that you are going to enjoy this episode. When Raila Molo Dinga made the move to collapse NASA, when he decided to chart his own political path away from Kalonzo, Musalia, and Wetangula, personally, I thought that was one of the worst political mistakes Raila Dinga ever committed. I was wrong. Raila Dinga was right. It is very difficult working with those former NASA co principles. And you can tell from the way they've created confusion within their own political alliance. I don't want to get into that for now. If you challenge me, I'll get into details about that. Yesterday, President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta and Raila Moludinga held lengthy meetings with the members of parliament who are allied to the handshake, who are supporting the Azimio La Umoja, and members of parliament who supported the political parties amendment bill in parliament. One Kenya lands leadership were invited to that meeting by the president and state house. They never showed up. In this video, I want to reveal to you guys why one Kenya Alliance movement decided not to show up as status. And I want you to be the judge whether it was the best move for them or it was not the best move for them. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second. If you are watching for the first time, take a second, click subscribe button. Because what we do on this channel is that we analyze politics in a way you can't find it in their place. So just click that subscribe button. To the subscribers, you know what to expect. Now let us get back to business. And I want to be a bit brief. I'm actually going to Nyakach after this. Let, let me be very brief. And I want to begin by asking you a question. Do you know any latest activities or activity organized by one Kenya last movement in this country? Just show me, just remind me, maybe I've forgotten. Because I know for sure that William Samai Ruto was in Eldoret, came to Bomet, held a rally in Nairobi, unveiled his campaign team, which is basically his neck of UDA. That's one thing I'm sure about. So if you ask me to account for William Ruto's political activities for the past week, I will tell you. If you ask me about Raila Odinga, I will tell you. Today I know Raila Odinga is headed to Taita Taveta. Tomorrow I know Raila Odinga will be in Thika. And I know Raila Odinga met with the Vijana from um, Kiambu. He attended a funeral in uh, Meru. What about one Kenya Alliance movement? Are they still planning a strategy meeting to organize how to form a team which will then meet to organize for another meeting? I don't know. But I tend to think that if there's any political move which Raila Odinga made, which made sense, which didn't make sense to me, but is making sense to me now, is the move to run away from one Kenya Alliance leadership. They can really drag you down. So these guys decided not to attend the meeting. Their allies attended the meeting. According to Kalonzo Musioka, he invited the allies. He, he agreed with the allies to attend the meeting, that they should attend the meeting according to Kalonzo. Then according to Weta, maybe he doesn't even have control over them. For Muslim Rebadi, he told his allies not to support as the Mio Lao, I mean, the political parties amendment bill. But most of them supported that amendment and they attended this event. For Gideon Moy, is a shadow of President Uru Kenyatta. So whenever the president is, that's where you should find Gideon Moy. 
But that's not the objective of this video. I want us to look at why these guys decided not to attend the meeting. The first reason why they never wanted to attend this meeting is that they felt that was going to be a trap laid for them by the president, by President Ru Kenyatta to support Raila Amolodinga. The truth of the matter is that the president has appealed to these guys to support Raila. He has told them that the NIS report is this. According to this report, you guys, there's no way you can become president. The only person amongst you who can become the president is Raila Molodinga. So the best thing for you is to support Raila Molodinga. So they didn't want to fall for a trap where they attend a meeting and then from nowhere, they realize that they've endorsed Raila Molodinga. And of course, as One Kenya Last Movement, they have a technical team which is working on a presidential candidate. That technical team has been meeting. They met. They were supposed to, to, to release the, the report this week. They are still meeting. I'm told on 28 they should meet, address the press. So they didn't want a situation where they attend the meeting. The president ambushed them that, you know, it is Raila Amolo Odinga. <laughs> on that, personally, if you ask me, I agree with them. But it's also time for them to decide. Because the politics of this country is turning out to be a two horse race. Either they support Ruto or they support Raila. If they can't support Ruto and they can't support Raila, then they should focus on becoming a serious tank force. If they can't do that, then they're wasting time for their supporters. In fact, for Rumsalem Ravadi, I think he's losing more by being indecisive. If he had supported Ruto, if he had agreed to support Ruto, probably he would by now be actively on the ground selling Ruto. If he were to be with Raila, would be okay for him. But the truth is, they didn't want a situation where they attend the meeting, Raila ambushed on them. That's number, number two, I think they didn't attend this meeting because of cracks within the alliance. There's serious division within one Kenya alliance movement. There is mistrust. In politics, as long as there's mistrust, nothing can move. There's a strong feeling that Musalem Davadi and Weta already have an agreement with the Deputy President Dr. William Ruto. There's also a strong feeling that Gideon Moy is an agent of Uru Kenyatta in that group. And then there's a feeling that Kalonzo is willing to work with Raila. So, and because of those divisions, there was no way they were going to agree. Because for them to attend this meeting, they, they should have actually agreed that we are attending this meeting and this is going to be our position. We are going to, to tell Uru we are not going to support Raila. We are going to support ourselves or to support us. And one thing they didn't want to do is to expose the cracks so that Mudavadi attend, I mean Mudavadi and Weta fails to attend, then Gideon Moi and Kalonzo decides to attend. So Gideon Moi and Kalonzo decided that if Weta and Mudavadi, I mean Weta and Mudavadi are not coming, the best thing for us to do is to avoid this meeting. So that we don't expose one Kenya Alas movement even as we proceed. Because they're saying that they are busy. Weta is saying that uh, the invitation came late. Orengo gave him late when he already had uh, a busy schedule. I've checked yesterday where Weta was. I couldn't find. Of course, for Kalonzo, he had some engagement in Mukuru Kwanjenga. Maybe it was planned that day or maybe prior. But at least for him, he was there. Salem Dabadi said that he had some other engagements elsewhere. I've checked where was Muslim Dabadi. So basically, these guys just didn't want a situation where the cracks within their lands is exposed. Number three is the late invitation. These guys received invitation late, according to them. And according to me, it could have been deliberate. Maybe Uru and Raila didn't want them to attend. So they give them the, the invitation late. Then they refuse to attend. Or they just, they're just rebelling. 
Because the truth of the matter is that according to members of parliament, this meeting, the, the idea to, for the president to organize a meeting for Azimio supporters came during Raila Odinga's birthday party. There are members of parliament who are present at that party. The president himself was present. And then they appealed to the president, please do one thing, do us a favor. Invite us to state house, those who are supporting the Azimio. So the president, in his own wisdom, decided, let me invite you guys very fast. And that's how this event was organized. So these guys are saying, for us, we needed time. You needed, you needed to, have in, to have invited us two weeks so that we can see how our busy schedule, how it is. <laughs> Number four is external influence. I'm sure these guys were influenced from outside. There is no way Mudavadi can refuse to attend status meeting, even if it's short notice. I'm sure if today President Ruki were to place his phone call and tell Mudavadi, can you come to state house? In the next three hours, he would drive, even if he was in Kakamega. The same to Kalonzo, the same to Waita. So there must have been some external influence, either within their supporters or external influence from outside. For Mudavadi, I'm sure, maybe, because Mudavadi is surrounded by people who are supporting the DP, maybe they told him, don't go there, Usiende. Because if you go there, you'll be, more, you'll be told to endorse Rahila. Or if you go there, you shall have surrendered. Or if you go there, you'll appear to be a puppet. Okay, I'm not going. Possibility, external influence. And lastly, and this is where I believe, lack of strategy. The truth of the matter is that one Kenya Alliance movement, that team, lacks strategy. They don't have a strategy. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go to. What next? They don't know. Gideon Moy is also very angry with them. So it's lack of strategy. Watch and in the we meet next time. Bye bye.